Hello, and thank you for joining us for a conversation around safeguarding data from threats across the wide area network. Wanted to have a conversation with my colleague Trules today about this particular topic because Trules and his team have been working on a, a new technology, a new, a new product release for us that will address some of, the, some of the issues that we're seeing in this weird world that we're living in where there's so much data being generated from so many different devices in the internet of things with so many expectations around what the what the uptimes and the availabilities of this technology are going to be. So Trules, maybe you could give us a little bit of a, a you know a, a base level for why and how you developed what you're what you're doing. Yeah, so you're exactly right. Um, uh, businesses are generating more and more and more and more data, more and more instrumentation, and it's happening in all kinds of different industry verticals. In addition to that, um, you know, we all have higher and higher expectations for availability for more and more different kinds of applications. And we expect pretty much any, you know, new application, oh, this is exciting. But now I suddenly immediately expect that that's going to be available 24 by 7, round the clock from any device anywhere in the world. And so IT organizations are kind of faced with both this, this deluge of data, more and more and more data that needs to be stored and needs to be protected, plus higher and higher expectations for availability where there isn't really a, a window where you can kind of, uh, you know, take the application down, do a backup, et cetera. It needs to be protected 24 by 7 by 365. Yeah, I think one of the things that's that's true in the environment today is there's there's no good way to be famous in infrastructure. There's only <laughs> there's only ways to be infamous in infrastructure, and that's not at all the same thing. Yeah. So you know that trend is certainly there, and I and I and I understand that. But the infrastructure around it has also changed. Yes, so it's it's not the same kind of world that we were living in with with dial-up modems and so on, right? So tell me a little bit about how that that infrastructure change has has altered the way you're looking at the design of the platforms. Right, IT organizations have been deploying, of course, faster and faster uh, infrastructure, faster and faster networking gear. Um, we've seen the uh, the um, Ethernet infrastructure within data centers um, evolve um, from one gig to 10 gig, uh, you know, over the last few years, 25 gig Ethernet, um, you know, pervasively uh, through the data center. And same thing for, for data protection between two sites, we've seen bigger and bigger and bigger connections being deployed between the two sites. So what was perhaps a, uh, a small wing connection, you know, expensive one back in the day, eventually we saw um, 10 gig connections being pretty common. You know, now we see customers deploying 100 gig between um, two sites. And this is exactly where our new Brocade 7850 extension switch comes into play. Um, the Brocade 7850 was built exactly for this. It provides um, those 25 gig ethernet ports uh, for connectivity to various gear within the data center. It provides 100 gig interfaces for the WAN connections between the two sites, and they can actually sustain 100 gigs of replication I.O. between two sites to deliver that performance that's now required to protect um, uh, all the data for large organizations. So I think one of the things that, that customers run into is kind of a surprise for some of the folks I've talked to is, you know, they'll be told there's IP replication already on the arrays, you know, it's all taken care of, you don't have to worry about anything. And there'll be a 10 gig or maybe even a 25 gig port um, on the array, but then, then they find themselves um, seeing issues where they they're not getting the throughputs, or or it's having some other effect in the in the in the platform. So you know, you talk about these these massive pipes that are being put into 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 infrastructure. How does the 7850 actually you know take advantage of that, or or or, or work around that issue that that people are seeing? Right. So you see more and more arrays now that have built-in IP replication, and it seems like a simple thing, but it's actually very very difficult to achieve high replication performance over distance. Um, there's a couple of things that come into play when you're trying to replicate over long distances and uh, kind of the two big factors are latency and packet loss. I call those two the mortal enemies to replication performance. Um, replic um, so start with latency. Latency, you know, the longer the connection, the longer the distance, the more latency you have. And latency is very corrosive to replication I.O. Eventually, uh, replication traffic becomes latency bound in the sense that it doesn't really matter how much bandwidth you have, you, you furnish this huge pipe between the two sites, but once you're latency bound, you're actually limited by the acknowledgements that you know, any, any application, replication application has some level of chattiness. You send a little bit of data, you wait for an acknowledgement that it makes it to the other side, et, et cetera. And it, with, with meaningful latency, um, all of those acknowledgements slow down and eventually you, you just can't get more through that uh, connection over distance. The other big factor is packet loss. And um, uh, modern wine connections have gotten much, much better. Um, so you now have less packets, but there's always some level of packet loss. It might just be, let's say, 0.1%. You lose one packet out of every 1,000. It doesn't seem like much, but the problem is the overhead associated with the recovery for even that one lost packet 
is very, very significant. And so um, we often see that even that low level of packet loss, that might, might by itself lower the total throughput by perhaps 95% or maybe even more. Um, and um, both, the, both at the protocol level and the replication application, you might actually see them sort of backing off on the assumption that that lost packet possibly means congestion and that maybe they were, they were sending too much. Um, and, and so it immediately leads to a lower level of uh, performance when either of those two uh, are in play. And of course, usually over long distance, you have some level of a combination of the two. You have latency and you have some, some level of packet loss. So you're juggling a, a wide range of characteristics, and I'm, I'm going to throw a couple more at you, you know, because normally we're, we're describing to customers that, you know, they should have multiple providers with multiple pathing, right? Because, you know, any single path is obviously not going to be, not going to be accept, acceptable. So how do, you, how do you take advantage of that? And how do you, take, how do you maintain the reliability of the, of the uptime of that connection when you're dealing with multiple links and, and from different people? Right. So what we're talking about here is protecting mission-critical data. So uh, you have to ensure that the replication continues um, uh, uninterrupted. And, and uh, what we find is that IT organizations spend a lot of time just sort of modeling out what are all the things that can go wrong, whether that is losing power to some device uh, you know, anywhere in the path, whether that's one of the WAN circuits uh, going down, um, or whether that's um, you know, a, a fiber break, you know, some cable breaks you know, at any point. And what you want to be able to do is to protect yourself in a scenario where regardless of what fails, you still have that flow of data happening between the two sites. Now, in the Brocade 7850, we have a few key technologies that are really aimed at maintaining that very high level of, um, of availability. Um, one is what we call extension trunking. Mm -hmm. Extension trunking allows you to aggregate together multiple dissimilar WAN connections. Dissimilar is important here because um, you want to be able to procure multiple WAN circuits from different service providers. If they're all from the same service provider, chances are the connections are going over the exact same bridges and, yep. and uh, the, the same, same conduits, yeah. etc. Yeah. And, and if one connection goes down, you're probably losing the other connection as well. You want to be able to aggregate together multiple uh, service providers that, that might have different I.O. characteristics, different levels of throughput, different levels of latency and packet loss. And we can do full active-active load balancing and failover over many circuits. Could be two, could be four, could be ten. Um, you can do many, many different circuits, and we do full automatic um, active load balancing between those uh, circuits. Second thing is we also have a technology um, called adaptive rate limiting. That's really there to help uh, manage the flow of data between the two sites. So in a scenario where there is, let's say, a cable break, or uh, usually you deploy these uh, uh, 7850s in a pair, two, you know, two or four maybe at, at each site, if you lose power to one of those devices, let's say, you want to set it up so that the other that's still alive can kind of make up for the lost performance that's there. This is also one of the scenarios where the phenomenal performance we have comes into play. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that there's enough bandwidth and throughput available so that one device can make up for the loss of another if it's, uh, if it's lost power or if one of the cable segments that it talks through um, are not available kind of at the, at the moment. Our philosophy behind this is that we want to make sure that we can drive maximum available replication throughput even when something goes wrong. So whether it's a you know an, an event level uh, item or it's a time of day, time of week, you know spikes in the in the traffic and throughput, you folks can adapt to it. Yes. Great. So that's that's you know all of the pieces that take care of sort of the things that we normally uh, architect for in, in infrastructure, you know, which are things that, that can happen to our infrastructure. But there's there's also this other characteristic that I want to ask you about, right? Because we're we're moving data outside the data center, and that's a threat vector where you know anybody who's who's been awake or alive in the last few years knows that there are hackers out there that are actively trying to get into every system they they possibly can, right? So, you know, what are you doing about the the threat for ransomware or for or for you know any any kind of um, you know uh, active um, uh, threat from, from an outside actor. Yeah, AJ, it's a huge issue. We've all seen the headlines, right? Um, more and more attacks and, and uh, bigger and bigger impacts when something like this occurs. And as an IT organization, you definitely don't want to make the, uh, make the press for, for these kinds of, uh, of reasons. So, um, so in the Brookhead 7850 um, platform, there are several key things that are really aimed at providing that high level of security. First of all, it's a Gen 7 platform, and we've uh, invested significantly in hardening our uh, platforms to provide the maximum level of, uh, of security. 
comes into play in a few different ways. We've really hardened the operating system itself um, to reduce the attack surface that's available. Um, fewer services turned on, there's no root account, et cetera, to lower the chances that um, you're gonna be attacked. The, 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 the fewer things that are available and uh, places to penetrate, the better off you are. We also do full root of trust for the hardware and for the software. Uh, to make sure that the hardware hasn't been modified and that nobody's modified the the software so those are key to ensuring that yeah i'm running i'm running the real thing in addition to that we provide encryption um, at full line rate in the platform that is done with a dedicated fpga complex it's not done with a general purpose processor um, you can run at full line rate with no performance impact which means you can always have encryption turned on you know, you don't, do not have physical uh, control over the long distance connection when you're running, let's say, replication across the country or, or intercontinental. Um, and we can provide that full level of, uh, of performance with encryption turned on with no performance penalty. Um, so another big thing. Final thing is, um, in the Burkhead 7850, um, we have dual processing complexes. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have the ability to provide uh, firmware updates on the platform even while you're sustaining replication traffic over um, IP. That's actually very, very hard to do. Um, that IP stack uh, sort of needs to be hosted and needs to be running. And on the Brickhead 7850 platform, we can actually do a, we, we can fail over the traffic from one processing complex to the other. We can do the upgrade of the, uh, uh, the, the idle processing complex fill the traffic back over and upgrade the other complex and actually still sustain replication traffic between the two sites even while you're doing the firmware updates. That means that an IT organization can ensure that they, they can apply their security patches regularly as they come out and they might not have to wait for a service window that you know or perhaps they have to wait until after Christmas season um, for the next window where they can bring the device down. Um, they can do it as they come in. It's another critical thing, and it's a unique technology for Brigade's um, uh, extension platforms. So, Trolls, that sounds like a you know a, a great platform that that's definitely um, provided the right level of functionality and the right level of capabilities to our customer base, and and plugs into the existing infrastructures and the newer infrastructures very very well. Right, 7850 provides a platform that is uh, secure, high performance, and highly reliable. It's available now from Brocade and from our OEM um, uh, partners. And I would encourage you to go out and uh, obtain more information from your normal OEM provider. Great. I want to thank you folks for joining us today. And if you'd like to find out more about the Brocade 7850, please feel free to visit our website or talk to your favorite OEM or channel partner about it. And we'll hope to see you again soon.